bored yet? I'm bored. I'm here at home. Um, so let's make the best of it. So I had this idea, I wanted to build like this all-in-one woodworking cart that had my table saw, my router table, joiner, planer, uh, really everything that I need to build here at home. So I'm gonna start building it. Here goes nothing. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna build the bottom frame. I'm gonna build this whole thing from the bottom up where I'm going to put my wheels and then everything comes up from there. All right, got the foundation of the car put together and now I'm going to put on the floor and then call it a day because it's Florida and it sucks out here. All right, that's enough for today. I built the foundation and the floor, got it on wheels. So tomorrow I'm gonna start building the cabinets and then all the fun stuff. So, later. All right, I finished the first box that the two drawers to the right of the table saw are gonna go in, right there. And I glued a little strip of three quarter inch plywood to the edge of the base so that I'll have room for my drawer fronts. So it'll all be flush right there at the edge. Morning. Today I'm gonna to build the pedestal that the saw sits on so that the top sits flush with everything else. A um, Couple more compartments and if I have time, start building drawer boxes. So, let's have a good day. All right, I got the, uh, the pedestal built, the saw's on there. And I checked it to see if it's level. And that is pretty dang satisfactory. All right, this is what I've been waiting for. So I wanted to have a joiner and a planer incorporated into this thing. So I ordered a uh, combo joiner planer from Jet. Now I'm gonna build around it. I wanted to fit everything to it. So now that it's here, let's see how it goes. Got my measurements for the combo joiner planer, so time to make my compartment for it. Guess what? I got all the compartments done. Check it out. Pretty exciting. Okay, this is the fun part of the design that I've been really excited to show you guys. This is the joiner planer combo. The planer is down here and the joiner is up here. I want to have the joiner level with the top at all times but i need to be able to raise it up for the planner so i got this like this motorcycle jack um to bring it up and down so i think that'll work maybe we'll see it's ugly here in florida i'll do this in the morning see you guys later happy wednesday guys we got the cutout for the table saw uh now we need to cut this section out for the joiner planer and then uh, once that's cut out, we can attach the top. Check it out. I got my cutout for the joiner planer. Left some room over here so I could adjust the infeed. Um, table saws cut out, so. Yeah, let's keep rolling. All right, 
so top is on everything is cut out okay i thought that the motorcycle jack was a good idea but it's a little wobbly so i don't want it actually sitting on the jack so i'm gonna uh, put it on a platform i'm gonna make two stops one that keeps the joiner bed level with the top and then another one that keeps the planer level with the top and so the jack's just going to be used to um, bring them between those two stops so it's not really going to be sitting on it it's just for adjusting the level so maybe that'll work i hope we'll see as you can see i've just about had it for the day so we'll pick up tomorrow with uh leveling this guy and drawer boxes so that'll be fun hey i'm back sorry for the interruption uh there's a bunch of other work i had to do but now I'm back on this thing and uh, let me get you up to speed. So first thing I did was I removed the fence that came on the saw because it only went to here and I needed it to go here. So I fabricated a new fence and I put on this digital fence readout from Wixie on it and it's pretty sweet. Now I just touched the fence to the blade here and I can zero this thing out and then the thing will read off of this green strip stuff. Pretty cool. I made a couple drawer boxes. Uh, they're just full of junk right now, but I'll organize these later. Uh, Got to make one more drawer box for this and then, you know, shelving and cabinet doors and all that. I also mounted the joiner planer to this platform here. And so using the jack, I can raise and lower it, but um, it's level with the top so that I put these stops on here so that when I lower it down, it'll rest on these stops and be level with the top. Now that all that's done, I can install the router. So the router's gonna go right here in this cabinet behind the saw. So I gotta route out a cavity for the plate. Router's installed, check it out. So you got it all flush with the top with leveling screws and check out what I did for the fence. It's kind of interesting. Like I said, I'm gonna use the T-slot on the table saw as the router table fence. So they lock in with zero play miter stops. It's got incremental adjustment and if I need more capacity, I can scooch it back. Morning, hope everybody had a good weekend. I know I did, I did some more work on this bad boy. So let me get you up to speed. I got all the dust collection hooked up. Uh, it's all internal, so um, probably should have done that before I put the top on. I also plugged all the tools into a power strip and then that into this auto switch. So anytime I turn on any one of the tools in this thing, it's gonna turn on the vacuum and everything's connected. So it'll just uh, save some time. So I'm gonna put dovetail tracks into this whole thing and up here, so I'll have a 90 degree uh, surface so that I can, you know, for assembly stuff. Jeez! So many noises outside. I'm gonna route dovetail tracks in this and on here, so I'll have a 90 degree, you know, corner to work on for assembly. Um, but check this part out. Here's another fun little addition. Um, I put a recessed dust port right here in the middle of the surface uh, so that it's all flat and um, it's got these magnets here that stick to the screws, keep it from rattling around too much. So now when I'm using any tool other than these three tools, um, if I'm sanding or routing, I can just plug her on in and uh, I don't have to go digging on the inside to try to find a place to put the hose. So today I'm going to do something a little different with the uh, joiner for the fence. Um, it came with a fence, but it screws on, doesn't come on and off very quickly, and it might get in the way if I need to rip something wide. I need something that'll go right on, right off in like seconds. And my solution for that is I'm going to use my mag fence. I bought this uh, steel bar here. I marked where my fence needs to be so that I can set my fence down, lock it in place, and it'll give me my 90 degree face there. And yes, I know it's going to be fixed at 90 degrees, um, but I can count on one hand how many times I've had to tilt my joiner fence. I just, I never end up needing to do it. I did it like once or twice. So it's going to be fixed at 90. I know it's going to be 90, so I don't even have to adjust it. So 
That's exciting. Moment of truth, let's see if it's square. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That is super cool, because whenever I don't need to use the joiner, I can have the top completely flush, nothing getting in the way where I need it. Boom. All right, I need to get this thing back inside because there's direct sunlight on it and it wouldn't be the most damaging thing in the world, but it's, you know, it could swell and warp and stuff and I just made it, so I want it to be nice. I'm gonna roll it in, but before I do that, I wanna show you the inside of my tiny shop. Entering, we've got the tool chest. We've got some cabinets, hardware, all my micro jig, well, not all my micro jig stuff, but you know, the push blocks. Um, I put in a bunch of French cleat shelving so I can move things around and adjust as needed. Got my air compressor stowed right here next to under all the finishing stuff. Cabinet, um, more finishing stuff, little makeshift router table, all my tools, not all of them, but you know, the ones I have out. I put my chop saw on these cabinets that my neighbor was getting rid of. And when I say getting rid of, I meant he was throwing them away. Yes, I dug them out of his trash. Shut up, don't judge me. Dovetail clamp storage. Oh, what's that? While I'm over here, quick public service announcement. Uh, these MatchFit dovetail clamps, they're normally $45 a pair and they're $39.95 for the rest of this month. And if you buy two pairs, then you get a free dovetail router bit. We're just giving this stuff away. Got my bandsaw here. I'm gonna put that on some wheels so that I can move it around if I've got bigger pieces to work with. Uh, extra dust collector. I'm gonna have the chop saw and the bandsaw hooked up to that one. And everything else is gonna be hooked up to the cart. And one very important feature of this new little tiny shop is these citronella candles here. That one and that one and many more because this is Florida and the mosquitoes are like dinosaurs out here. Morning, hope everybody had a good weekend. Mine was productive. Uh, did some more stuff to this behemoth here. So let me show you what I did. Uh, where we left off, I was showing you this dust port that I added at the top surface here. I did something kind of similar with this recessed uh, power strip. So. Um, the power strip is also plugged into the vacuum system. It's got a cover. So now I can do, um, you know, any sanding or routing that I need to uh, without having to go digging around inside for a hose or power. I can just plug in here, plug the hose in there, and everything will be hooked up to the same system. I made this thing pretty big, as big as I can possibly make it and still fit through the doors there. Um, so these cabinet doors, I was originally just going to put, you know, traditional door hinges on it. Um, but I need to be able to open it while it was inside. And since there's not enough clearance for me to open it, you know, uh, swing it open while it's inside the shed, here's what I did instead. I put these braces here and some pretty high powered magnets and embedded some in the doors to match up. So instead of having to swing a door open, I can just So because these come on and off so easily, and they're flat on both sides. I didn't want them to just be doors. I mean, that seems like kind of a waste. So I'm going to route a grid of dovetail tracks and use them as sleds. When you have a space this small, every little thing that you have in here counts. It's gotta have more than one function. It's gotta be very well thought out. And that's why I'm integrating the whole match fit system into this tiny little 10 by 12 space. Anyway, that being said, um, still got some drawer fronts, some drawer boxes to do. Um, you know, more finishing stuff, but that'll be a lot easier to do once I have my work holding system in place. So let's route some dovetail tracks.
Here's a cool thing. I just got my card scraper in the mail from uh, Mark, the Wood Whisperer, and um, he did a little promo on his Instagram and I saw it and I ordered it immediately and it's sweet. Check it out. Anyway, I wanted to take this thing for a spin, so I uh, grabbed this glued up strips that I had laying around for whatever reason, and I've got them secured here with the dovetail clamp AP. I'm using spacers so that the top is totally clear. Morning. It's a beautiful day and I've got lots of dovetail tracks to route, so I'm ready to get to it. Uh, but I do want to show you a little trick that I learned about how to do these and do them nicely. Okay, I measured the, uh, the router base and it's symmetrical, so half of that measurement would be the center of my bit. And based on that, uh, I wanted to do four inch spacing, so based on that measurement, I cut this guide rail here. But along with the guide rail, I cut these little wood pieces here that fit snugly into the, uh, the dovetail tracks. So now I can register off of the last dovetail track that I cut. So here it is in the first one that I cut. Didn't wiggle. And then once I get this one done, I put it in there. And now I can route this one. And then you just keep going down the line. All I had to do was route one dovetail track. And then um, now that I'm registering off of the last dovetail track that I cut, every subsequent track that I route is uh, gonna be totally parallel and exactly equal spacing with the last one. All right, one more track to cut. I've got all of these and I've got all of these. Last one is just this guy right here. And it seems like something I'm definitely gonna mess up because that's just how my life goes. So, fingers crossed. I did it. Um, so I cut all these tracks and I removed a lot of material. So when you remove that much material, you're releasing a lot of the internal stress in the wood. But anyway, I cut all this open. So I opened the pores and I exposed it to moisture and uh, solid wood's always going to be very vulnerable to uh, temperature and humidity changes. So I'm going to seal it up with some cheap finish. I just need to protect it from sunlight, rain and moisture and temperature changes. Remember this thing is going in my shed. And this is a utility project, so it doesn't need to be like the best stuff. It's fine. All right, so I sprayed some uh, spar urethane on that extension wing, and I figured while it was drying, I would give you guys a quick little backstory on why I'm doing this. And if you're not interested, I wouldn't blame you at all. So you can just skip the next like two or three stories. Oh, you're still here. Okay. Well, right around the time that I started working for Microjig, I moved from a house that had a garage to a house that did not have a garage. And that's this house right here. I had a pretty sweet setup in my old garage, but um, you know, obviously I moved here and I didn't have the space. So I got rid of a lot of that stuff. I figured I've got everything that I need at work in the Microjig shop. so. Just get rid of it. And that worked out just fine until this whole COVID mess started. So I had all my tools, you know, for doing like basic home improvement stuff, but I wasn't really set up to do anything nice. And uh, now I'm stuck at home and I want to do nice stuff. So that's it because I can't go to work and uh, I'm not in the micro jig shop. That's why I built this abomination here with everything that I had left. And I got some new tools because who doesn't like new tools? 
and I really took my time and cleaned this thing out. So I've got, you know, this set up here. It's still a shed. It's hot and it's full of mosquitoes, but you know, it's as close as I can get without putting an addition on my house. Morning. Uh, over the weekend, I finished spraying this thing down with some spar urethane to protect it from the Florida humidity, which it's wood. It's still gonna move a little bit, but it's better. And now that I've got all my dovetail tracks cut on this 90 degree, you know, assembly setup, I can finally finish making my drawers. Let's talk about drawer boxes. So the slides that I'm using are about a half inch thick. I think that's pretty standard. So I always make my drawer boxes an inch and a 16th smaller than the space they're going in. But I can't really just measure it and then subtract an inch and a sixteenth because I'm um, using half inch plywood for the boxes. And is the plywood actually a half inch thick? Almost certainly not. So what I like to do is I take two scrap pieces of the plywood that I'm making my drawer boxes out of, the two drawer slides, and then I measure the distance from there to the edge. And that is the length that the front and back parts of my drawer boxes need to be. All right, got my four sides cut and um, haven't glued anything together, I just want to make sure everything fits. So I stuck the pieces in there, got my drawer slides, and it's nice and snug. It's a good fit. Hey, here's a fun trick. Uh, if you have a gripper advanced, then you should have one of these stabilizing plates. And the slots on here are four inches, just like our standard match fit spacing. So I'm actually using them as stops for uh, setting up these drawer boxes. You know, you get that kind of 360 degrees of movement, which we love. And the little hook here, you can use as a, uh, you know, as a stop, which I'm using on the bottom here. I'm only making a few right now, but if I was making like 10 drawer boxes, I definitely want to have some stops set up so that as I assemble two parts, take them off, put the next ones on, they just go right where they're supposed to be. I don't have to align anything. Uh, the bottoms of these drawers, I just used corner plywood and attached it to the bottom. Um, this was a real finished project. I would have used box joints and a fully captured bottom, but it's a utility project, so whatever. It works. And I made it slightly oversized on every side, so um, I'm going to chamfer all these edges here. So when you pull it out, you can't really see the bottom from, you know, the side. You have to get underneath it to see it. All right, got my three drawers in, so time to do drawer fronts. Once I get those in, it's gonna start to look a lot more finished. So let's do it. All right, I got all three drawer fronts cut. Um, and for the handles, I'm not gonna use hardware. I'm just gonna cut uh, cut a handle out because I don't want anything sticking out. I don't know. To mark out uh, where I'm gonna cut the handle out of one of the drawer fronts, do that one really carefully, and then just use that as a template. Line everything up on the other two, rough it out, and then um, just uh, flush trim it. I got the one drawer front pretty well cleaned up. Um, so I took this, I transferred it over here to this one and that other drawer front, just traced them. Gonna rough them out with the jigsaw and then flush trim with the router. All right, so we've gotten a lot of feedback about this project. A lot of folks are curious about the process and all that. At this point, I just attached the drawer fronts, filled up the storage and kind of got to work. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot left to explain here. Um, so. I just, I finished it up, but I did create a final uh, reveal video. So if you want to see the finished project, then stay tuned because that's about to start right now. Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I'm coming to you from my home. 
not this. This isn't my home. I know this looks a little different from the videos that you're used to seeing where they're filmed in the microjig shop, uh, but I, like many of you, am working from home, and I'm going to continue working from home until this whole COVID thing gets sorted out. But the thing is, I don't have a shop at home. All I have is this 10 by 12 shed. And if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen some posts over the last few months about this cart I built to make the most out of this 120 square feet and make it an actual functional workspace. And now I'm happy to say it's finally done. Welcome to Tiny Shop with Morgan Hopp. I started by designing a 3D model based on the space available and the tools I wanted to incorporate into it. The finished project's a little different from the initial design, but it's pretty close. I built a two x four frame to attach casters and then a plywood floor. On top of that, I added various cabinets and compartments for the tools I incorporated, drawers for storage, and a dust collection system underneath. The top needed to serve as my table saw out feed, my router tabletop, joiner bed extension, and assembly surface so I had to be strategic about where I placed the tools in relation to each other to get the most out of the surface. Since the table saw is a job site saw with an extendable wing, the fence was limited to the saw's capacity. I needed about twice that capacity, so I fabricated my own fence rails and bought an aftermarket T-square style fence. I also got a digital fence scale for Christmas a few years ago and I haven't been able to use it yet, so it seemed like a good opportunity. The router sits right behind the table saw, so I couldn't have a permanent fence sitting there getting in the way of operating the table saw. So I decided to put some zero play miter stops on this inker fence and secure it to the miter slots on the table saw. This fence is indexed and it has its own scale. So all I need to do to position the fence and get an accurate measurement is use this setup jig I made a while back. I know that the center of this hole is exactly four inches from this edge. So I just lock the fence measurement at four inches, bump it up to the edge of the jig and lock it down with the miter stops. If I need more capacity, all I have to do is loosen the miter stops, scoot the whole thing further back in the miter slot. Another space saving feature is the joiner planer combo. Stuff to adjust the joiner planer combo is all in the drawer right beneath it. And the jack to move it between the joiner and planer position sits on a shelf just above the drawer. I also added these little leveling screws to fine tune the height. This is all wood, so it's gonna swell and warp and it may not be level tomorrow, um, but this allows me to adjust it. It came with a fence, but it attached to the joiner with screws, which seemed like it'd be burdensome to put on and take off. I solved that problem with my mag fence and a recessed steel bar. So whenever I need to use the joiner, I can pop the fence on and off in just a few seconds. And it won't interfere with operating any of the other tools. I put a recessed power strip and dust port right in the middle of the top so I wouldn't have to unplug anything or run extra extension cord where I need to use any tool other than the three that are built in. It's all hooked up to the same auto switch and dust collection system, so whenever I need to sand or route something, it's pretty much plug and play. I needed the storage to be as versatile as possible because of the crazy space restrictions. Anything that I need to access and use quickly is kept right next to the tool I'd need to use it on. I have my tall fence, joining sled, tapering jig right here behind the table saw. Blade storage and most of my table saw jigs are right by the table saw. Router bits are all stored in the router cabinet. I also keep some sanding drums in there so I can use the router as a spindle sander. I added a fold down extension here with a grid of dovetail tracks. When it's folded down, it gives me a 90 degree corner for assembly. I also fold it out when I need to use this flattening jig. It's just your basic router flattening jig, but it attaches with dovetail hardware and breaks down when it's not in use. It's also self-centering by having a bullnose profile on the rails and a V-groove on the router sled. It's just simple gravity that centers this whole thing, and with the opposing profiles, I have very little friction. Originally, I was planning on putting traditional hinges on these cabinet doors, but I made this thing so big that it barely rolls in and out of the shed. So since there's not enough clearance to swing open, I decided to attach the doors with magnets so they can come on and off and actually have the doors double as sleds. I already have table saw sleds coming out of the ears, so I figured I'd set these up as permanent fixtures for processes that I do pretty regularly. This one's a cross-cut sled with a permanent fence fixed at 90 degrees. Will I ever use it? I don't know, maybe. All the ancillary tools stored in here are mounted on their own plywood base, and they can easily be secured at the top with dovetail clamps and put back on the shelf when I'm done. That's about all for the cart. Um, I call it a most-in-one cart because it's not really all-in-one. There's a few tools that I just left stationary in the shed. Um, figured that would be more realistic than trying to get everything on there. The bandsaw, obviously way too big for the cart. And the miter saw because I wanted to keep the fence extension permanently set up. I put up these French cleat walls to store tools so I can move them around as needed. 
Got some hand tools here, planes, chisels, all that good stuff. I have this little 3D printer in here I use for prototyping jig ideas. It has sensitive parts, so it lives in this plexiglass case to protect it from dust. Hey Alexa, what's 5 16 as a decimal? 5 16 as a decimal is 0 0.3125. That's my assistant, she's super helpful. Is this an ideal workspace for someone who's almost six and a half feet tall? No. But with just 120 square feet in here and the cart, it's surprisingly functional thanks to the match fit system. Especially for assembly and hand tool work, the dovetail clamps and hardware will make it all possible. So if you're working with limited space, that's the way to go. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. And as always, if this sparks some imagination and you want to incorporate some of these ideas into your workspace, we'd love to see it. Be sure to tag us on social media and show us what you're working on. Thanks for watching.